Okay, so what we're going to do here is a liquidity pool review and just give some feedback on a in an altcoin pair that's been done uh, or that's been staked and then rebalanced. Uh, we had a member ask if they did this correctly, and I'm just going to walk through it, walk through the steps, what they did, uh, how much they staked, and the resulting end of that stake and what to expect from the rebalance. All right. So, uh, you know, I get this question a lot, so I figured I'd do a video on it. Um, a lot of members tend to have issues or just it's just trouble uh, or it's difficult to rebalance an altcoin pair while minimizing and permanent loss. So I'm going to walk through what happened here now, just to kind of give an overview of what happened or just what I saw from my analysis is that this one is actually done pretty well. So um, just take that into account and uh, it'll show, I'll be able to show exactly what to do and you can see it here in real time. So, all right, so we're looking at this liquidity pool. It's SPA with wrapped ETH on Arbitrum. Uh, they staked it with this range here. You can see it here on the screenshot or on the web page. So they started off with $1,084 in capital. So uh, this one has already closed. This was the initial pool. So what we want on the rebalanced is that if price was to mean revert back to their original stake price, that the, the value of the pool will be close enough to this $1,084 number. <clears throat> so what I wrote down here is kind of a breakdown of what happened. So here's the initial pool value on the notepad, right? 1,084. Here's the stake price of the SPA per ETH price, which was 220,000. So that's the stake price. And this is the breakdown of the liquidity pool, right? And then over here, uh, when the pool was unstaked, it was unstaked at a price of 420,000. So the range on this pool, the max range was 369,000. So uh, I, tend, I tend to hound on making sure to rebalance your liquidity pools before they go out of range. I know probably on an altcoin pair, it's very difficult and they, they just, they're very volatile. So, um, you know, that, that could have happened, you know, very volatile. You didn't get to it in time, but it still wasn't bad. You know, it's only about, uh, what is it about 30, 50,000 spa per ETH out of range. So, but, uh, that's just something to note there. Right. So they unstaked the liquidity pool at that price. And this is how much they got, uh, out of the liquidity pool, which was 700, the pool was worth $707, but that's without the yield, no yield accounted for. So, uh, that's separate. I'm not accounting for that. I'm just going by the value of the pool. So the yield is just a bonus on top of it, but you can see here, they earned $111, uh, and 50 cents in yield, but we're not going to take that into account. All right. So because, well, the reason why I'm not taking into account, let me just expand on that right because you're probably wondering why why don't you take it into account um because people do different things with their yield some compound it back into the pool some pull it out and take it and and cash out right so um depending on what you do it could vary and 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 create a different type of liquidity pool when you rebalance because you're actually if you compound the pool back in or the yield back into the pool that creates a bigger, bigger position uh you have more buffer in your or just more of leeway in how to rebalance your liquidity pool. So it, it just, it changes the, the dynamics of the pool if you add. It's kind of like adding more capital into your liquidity pool. So we're not going to account for the yield on this one. All right, so he, uh, the member, unst our member unstaked it, and they went and staked it into this pool. So they came out with the pool with $707 worth of spa because it was a full bag of spa because it was out of range. And then uh, they added about $13 to their new liquidity pool, which you see here is $720. And then they're currently in it right now. And it's actually yielding pretty well. I wonder if spa is uh, probably there's, maybe there's a lot of volume because what they did is they, they actually went wider in this liquidity pool. You can see here... Uh, the range is 64,000 to 608,000 
spa per ETH, whereas the initial pool was a lot tighter, 133,000 to 369,000, right? So you can see here on the rebalance, what they did was they took their spa, they sold off only just enough to, to get uh, staked into the new liquidity pool, but also widen out the ranges, right? To minimize that in permanent loss. So you can see how it works in, in, in cohesion there, right? Like you need a combination of widening, widening out your pools, getting your pools wider, and uh, the amount you sell off from your, from your liquidity pool and to rebalance, right? So the widening, widening out of the liquidity pool allows you to, uh, <clears throat> it gives you flexibility and, and overcomes the impermanent loss, but at the expense of some APR. But in this case, it's, it's printing more APR, as you can see on this pool, like that's, that's pretty good. But, um, you know, it could be some volume, you know, that that's, that's been coming in. So that's been helping and boosts up the, uh, the APR. All right, so moving on here. So if you look over here on DeFi Labs, this is a this is the setup for their original initial liquidity pool stake, and you can see here uh, how do you enter this into DeFi Labs and how do you forecast it? Well, I'm going to walk through it here. So first we're going to we're going to go to Spa per ETH, right? Here we go. We're going to bring up the pool. I was going to go do a daily chart here. It's kind of very volatile in the price. So you can see here. Yeah, prices here. Let's see if we could like. It's, you know, widening, widen it out a little bit, get it wide. Now you can see it's pretty volatile between like 500 to down at 120,000. So it's very volatile. All right. But uh, what they did here, they staked it, went out of range. Now you can, what the step, so the step I'm, I'm starting off here is we're at the point of after you've staked your pool, now you're at the point of rebalance. Okay, what do I do and how do I rebalance this? Okay, so say that price and in your initial uh, liquidity pool, this was it right here at 220,000 stake price, as you can see here, a value of $1,084, which equals to uh, this amount of spa, right? And the reason, the way I got this number is that you can go to the transactions in the past and you can see exactly what spa price they staked it at. You can see it here under transactions of the liquidity pool. You can see that it was staked at 0 0.008, right? So that equaled uh, a value of that much SPA, right? So here we go. So that's how I entered the SPA. That's the quantity amount times the 0 .008, 0 0.008 equals $1,084, right? And then you have your range here, which was 133,000 to 369,000. All right, we're all set. Let's uh, see how much the value is when you go out of range, right? So uh, the pool went out of range. You were left with about 155,000 uh, SPA. Uh, the number is a little different on the, on the transactions here. So we're going to go by the transaction here. Oops. Uh, when he removed the liquidity. So they had 150,110 SPA, right? at a value of $707. So we're like, okay. So the value of his spa is $707 when he unstaked. Now we need to take that value, putting it, put it into a new pool and figure out, okay, what is, uh, where is it that they're gonna have minimal and permanent loss? All right, so we're going over here. I've already set it up. Here's the new pool that they set up. Now let's see if the price of 
this liquidity pool, if it would get back to break even or back to their initial stake price, if they would be break even. So you figure that out, right? They set up this pool, right? I got it on value, right? Let's bust out a calculator. And now let's, let's do some math here. So their original stake price was 220,000 uh, SPA per ETH. Now I know it might be getting a little uh, confusing here. So let's just keep it simple, right? Okay, so I've already done all the math and everything. So I'm gonna kind of just summarize things, right? So we come down here to the 220,000 SPA per ETH, right? You got close enough to 222,000 that you see here. Now, what you do is you take the, the amount of SPA in each one, right? So let me get the calculator. And then we'll, I'll just do a quick, quick math here. 56.857.81. Then you add the 67.904. All right. Then you divide it by the, by the price. 6,800 was that. And then you multiply it by the price of Ethereum. So the price of Ethereum uh, when they staked it was 19. Uh, you can see here when they staked it, it was 1931. So we multiply that by 1931 equals $1,062. $1, so this is actually really good because their initial stake was valued at 1084 so about 20 bucks off, but they've made enough in yield and they got some uh, leeway on, on that. But they're pretty much break even on the liquidity pool if the price of SPA per ETH was to mean revert back to their original stake price. So as you can see, the price is oscillating, but they're still earning. In this pool, they were earning 54% in yield. This pool, their current pool, they're earning 100 22 percent in in yield which is really good and they're leaving the door open for mean reversion to get price back to their initial stake price and to recapture that value right that's the impermanent loss that you're trying to recapture back now the drawbacks to this is that if price was to continue to draw down you would be in a larger position with spa right because you have a bigger bag of spa so you could you could incur some losses. So this is where you have to factor in uh, risk, right? Do you want do you think the market's going to draw down further? Are you OK with that? If not, maybe sell off and lock in some of that impermanent loss to protect yourself from uh, getting hit with that drawdown on an aggressive position. Right. But if you're like, you know what, uh, I am OK having this risk on. I don't mind it. And that's fine too, right? So it all depends on your strategy and what your analysis of the market is. And you can see that what I'm teaching here is just understanding the mechanics of how to structure a liquidity pool based on your analysis, right? I'm not saying, okay, use my strategy, right? Because my strategy is different than what anyone else would be using, right? Because you're a different person. You could have a different time frame. You could have... Uh, less or more time available to manage, right? So these are things that have to be considered when, you know, which is when investing as a trader, right? So if you understand and master the mechanics of concentrated liquidity, you can shape your pools and understand exactly the results you'll get. And as you can see, you can plan all this out he could have they could have planned all this out and which they did, according to what I'm saying. They planned all this out, say, like on DeFi Labs, they set up a liquidity pool. Right. And they they kind of forecast it. OK, what happens when price gets back to 222 or 220, at least close to my initial stake price? Great. I'm very close to break even. I'm fine with that. Perfect. I just want to earn that yield. And that's it. And then you go ahead and stake it. And then on top of that, you could plan out your next rebalance, right? So these are things to uh, look at and consider. Um, it is a lot more difficult with altcoins because you have to figure out the the conversion, right? Um, they're more volatile, but they do pay more in APR. But 
they also can have bigger drawdowns. So they're they're more of a leverage trade. So keep them small. And uh, that's pretty much it. So, yep. So, uh, yeah, my overall analysis, it looks good. Um, and that's it. You know, so if you guys have any questions, please ask them in the chat. You know, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you.